Thank you, Pastor. Everybody, good morning. Great morning. Glorious morning. Progressive morning for you. Father, we thank you today. We thank you because of this impact to impact every life, to turn around every life, to do something good, something great, something progressive with every life. And we're asking today that your power will penetrate every life and Lord, we will get to the place you have ordained for every one of us. Everyone without exception. The one at the back of the queue. The one in the middle of the queue. The one at the front of the queue. Oh Lord, bring everyone to the peak of the mountain in Jesus' name. Transform us. Turn us around. Make us the boy, the girl, the man, the woman, the professional that we ought to be. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Every time I hear your amen, I'm excited. Amen. I'm excited to preach. I'm excited to lead. I'm excited to start living again you know what i wish somebody told me all that you are hearing today when i was much younger but never mind i'll make myself young praise the lord god bless you you can see down in the joy of the lord on the first day, we dealt with I. On the second day, M. On the third day, P. This day, this morning, tell me. Give it to me. Preach it at me. We're talking about A this morning. You know what? This letter A sends us forth into action. You see, whatever you have, the brain, the mind, the books, the school, the college, the work, the position, the authority, without action, nothing happens. Now with action, there's another word that whatever you have gathered in life, whatever you have learned in life, without attitude, proper attitude, positive attitude, progressive attitude, an attitude that makes you a winner without that attitude, you won't get anywhere. I bring those two things together. I'm talking to you today on ascending acts and attitude of advancing achievers. Ascending acts and attitude of advancing achievers. Now, already you've heard about Daniel, Joshua, and a lot of other people in the seminars that were attended. But you know, there are people that think if I'm in the right environment, in the right place, or the right people, or the good people, and with a great government, then I can be somebody in life. 
Can I tell you about Daniel, about Shikra, Meshach, and Abednego? He didn't have an enabling environment. Can I tell you about Daniel, Shikra, and Abednego? They did not have an encouraging environment. Can I tell you about Daniel, Mish uh, Abednego, Shikra, you know them? And they didn't have an environment, an institution, a gathering of people that will encourage them and lift them up and yet they make it i come to tell you this morning you will make it anywhere you are in the world online you're listening to me it it doesn't depend on them you have heard but you have not applied that one with god is in the majority and the Lord is with you. And you are with the Lord with ascending arts, with appropriate attitude. You can advance and become an achiever. We're looking at Daniel chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart. You know, that's the bottom line. And that is the secret of the whole thing. Others failed, but I purpose in my heart. Others have gone down that drain, but I purpose in my heart. My heart, I cannot purpose in their heart. I cannot use their brain. I cannot use the courage of that hero. I have to have it in me. It's what you have in you that will lift you up. And God will plant something in your heart today that will lift you up in Jesus' name. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he, I don't know about others, that he, I'm not concerned about others, that he would not defile himself. There are people that allow themselves to be pulled down by the crowd by the gang, by the people around them, by the world around them. But he said, I am an individual. I am a single person. I am a solitary one having a solitary goal. And I know me and God. He wasn't thinking, you know, my friends, my associates, my companions, and all these people around me. This man was a man of himself in the right way that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. Dead fish flow down the river helplessly. They are dead. But the one that's alive and said, I will swim against the tide. I will not defile myself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. You know, there are people, anybody you see on the billboard, they count as a hero. And he say, everything he does, I will do. What he smokes, I will smoke. What he drinks, I will drink. And where he buys is a commercial thing. That's what I'll do. They take everything, hook, line, and sinker of whatever they see on the billboard. Now, the king, number one. In Babylon, number one in the world. But Daniel said, I have a king above that king, higher than that king. Whatever he drinks, that's not mine. Whatever he eats, that's not mine. I do not walk by a temporary earthly hero. I take my cue from above. And therefore, I will not eat, I will not drink of the wine, of the food that he eats, that I will not defile myself. That's the person we're looking at today with his friends. You know the story about the friends now. That word acts, acts, A-C-T-S. That word will lift you up. 
if you are in the depth of the valley, that word will pull you up. There is a hand coming from heaven. And it's coming to you when you are there. That hand is long. That hand is strong. And anywhere you are, is stretching down the hand now. He'll touch you. He'll pull you up. It'll make you to be, you know, all those other heroes. Let's brush them aside now. Let the Almighty God come to you today, pull you up, and make you a hero. Yeah. I am. I am. I, am. I speak by faith. I am. I, am. I speak in prophecy. I am. I am. I speak with the vision and the eyes of an eagle that can see far. I am. I am, I am a hero. Am a hero. The word acts a advancing life. Advancing life. The one that wakes up every morning and he says, my life today will add value. Advancing life. See, courageous life. No matter how bright you are, no matter how visionary you are, if you are timid, if you are a coward, if they calm you down, and if you cannot look up, if you cannot look at the world eyeball to eyeball, you won't go far. There are people over there that will try to intimidate you. They'll try to push you back. They'll try to look at you and say, what are you doing there? Are you part of the progressive people? And instead of you wumbling and shaking and trembling, you stand firm there. You said, I'm not just part of the courageous people. I'll be a man and woman at the front of the line. You'll come to the front. They'll make way for you. Once they see, see you have courageous life that you're pushing through. The crowd will not stop you. The crowd will not stop me. See, teachable life. You see, the people that progress in life, the people that advance in life, they are not the people they know it all already. They're willing to learn. That's why you came. That's why you are here. You're willing to learn principles and practices and the laws that get a man, a woman, out of where he had been and then gets you to the top. Teachable life. And then S is a selfless life. Why are you learning this? I'm learning this to bless people. Why are you training for this? I'm training for this so that I can be a blessing to many more people. Selfless life. If you have those four and thank God, the Lord will implant those four in your life. In Jesus' name. Advancing life. Courageous life. Teachable life. Selfless life. But you know, Sometimes we have a good intention, a good purpose, and we have something before us. It's like that mountain I will climb. And then some things happen. Number one, from people that do not know who you are. They do not know what you are cut out for. They do not know what intention and what peak the Lord is leading you to, therefore they do something uh, that will rub you the wrong direction. And now comes your self attitude. If you have the right attitude, whatever happens around you, that attitude will give you a breakthrough. What's attitude? Let me just, you can check up in the dictionary, but let me give you this now, which spells out your attitude. A, appreciation. You just appreciate, here I am, Daniel, look at you in captivity. Look at you, you're taken away from your land and you come to Babylon. And Daniel says, you know what I appreciate? Other people died, I'm still alive. And when there's life, there is hope. He had right 
attitude, a appreciation to the tea there is thankfulness. Lord, I thank you for my breath. I thank you for my sleeping and waking up. I thank you I'm a man. I thank you I'm a woman. I thank you I am in a challenging environment and country where I can shine. The darkness does not hinder the star from shining. It brings out the brightness of the star even more because there's darkness. Lord, for everything, I thank you. For my food, I thank you. For my brain, I thank you. For what I'm learning, I thank you. For the place you put me in life and for my opportunities, I thank you. That is the right attitude. Thankfulness. T, the next T there is togetherness. Togetherness. You know, if you are not together with other people, you are isolated. Now, how are you going to use your knowledge? You are a great teacher, but as no student. You are a great doctor, but there are no patients. And you are a great engineer, but there's nothing to construct. And you are a great, uh, you know, uh, artisan, but there's nothing to build. Togetherness, that God has put me together. God has put you together with him, with her, with them. And you are happy about that. And you are not, uh, you know, trying to get out of togetherness. I like to be alone and go alone and learn alone and think alone and talk alone. If you are talking alone, going on the street, they'll think something is wrong with you. They'll be finding a place where to go and put you. Now, I, there is interestedness. Interestedness. You know, the, the people that have the right attitude, they are interested. I see a girl there crying. I'm interested. What's the matter there? I see something going on there. I'm not aloof. I'm not isolated. I'm not indifferent. I am interested. It is that interestedness in life. Interestedness in study. Interestedness in progress. It is that interestedness that makes you the person that you ought to be. And T there is for tolerance. You know, you need to have the attitude of tolerance and not get angry at everything, get emotional at everything, got fed up about everything and discouraged about everything. Tolerate, tolerate, just like you're doing now, the sun is shining, and, and the sun, you know, even if you cried, even if you sweated, even if you speech, uh, you know, on the sky, the sun will keep on shining. Oh, you should be like that, that even though people, they're sweating, and people are blowing fan, and people are, you know, saying, why is this, and why is that, and the sun keeps shining every time, and doesn't worry about what people see or what people see that you will be like that i will be like that tolerance tolerance learn to tolerate people everybody around you will not think the way you are thinking everybody around you will not feel the way you are feeling everybody around you will not be carrying what you are carrying at the time you are carrying it be tolerant that's a good attitude in life tolerance and then understanding understanding there are people that understand books but they don't understand people there are people that understand their friends they don't understand their enemies there are people that understand their partners but they don't understand those who are not their partners there are people that i understand their associates they don't understand their antagonists understand and when you understand in life and something is happening somebody runs to you this and that they think it will jolt you have you heard have you known have you seen this yes i understand yes i understand bad people are bad i understand good people are good i understand jealous people are jealous i understand envious people are envious i understand never do well sir uh, you know they are opposed to do uh, those who are doing well i understand i understand everything up i understand down below i understand present i understand horizontal i understand vertical i understand 
That is what pulls you over. And nothing can destroy your progress because of understanding. Now, there is devotion. You're devoted. Anything you're doing, your mind, your heart, your soul, your spirit, your skill, your knowledge, you're a concentrating person. And when you say, here is what I'm going to do. You're that, like that bulldog that has tenacity. And you keep on to that thing, devotion, and he is excitedness. That's a good attitude. I'm excited to live. I'm excited to be in a program like this. I'm excited to live at such a time like this. Excitedness. That attitude put all that together. It will lift you up and get you to high place in life in this world and in the world to come in Jesus' name. Did anybody say amen? amen. Ascending acts and attitude of advancing achievers. There are three things we're looking at. Let's look at number one here. Number one, attitudes that bar or build achievers. You know, our attitude can build us up. Our attitude can bar us from achievement. Attitudes that bar or build achievers. Number two, actions that break or broaden achievements. Actions. The things I do. Actions. What Adam did what evil did, action. What Absalom did, action. And what Judas Iscariot did, action. An action or a series of action may break a man down, break a project down, and break every vision down. But then an action can also build up and broaden, and broaden. Look at the action of Moses. That brought in freedom <clears throat> and brought freedom to the people of Israel. Look at the actions of Joshua that brought the promised land to the people who had been slaves for centuries. Actions that break or broaden achievements. Number three, associates that bury or birth accomplishments. You know, you can have some associates. Although they smile, although they laugh, although they say, I'm with you, and associate, but they rather want your life, your progress, your joy to be buried. But then there are other associates that will birth accomplishment in your life. Number three, associates that bury or birth accomplishments. Let's take them briefly one after the other. Number one. Number one, attitudes that bar or build achievers. Let's look at Ezekiel chapter 37, reading from verse 10. So, I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. That's what Ezekiel saw, that the ministry, the mission that he had was to come to the children of Israel, and even though they were down, that he will prophesy as the Lord had commanded him to do. And then he said, they will leave and they will rise up a great, mighty army. But look at them. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, and shall put my spirit in you, and shall ye shall live, and I shall place you in your land. Then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. A performance in every life. Amen. A manifestation in every life. Amen. But now, 
attitude. What's the attitude of the people? Let's go back to verse 11. In verse 11, it tells us, and it says, Then said he unto me, Son of man, these bones at the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dried, and our hope is lost, and we are cut off for our parts. That was a wrong attitude. Prophecy came to them. The declaration of heaven came to them. And he said, there's no hope. A hope lost. But you know, there are people, they look at things on the one side. They don't know what attitude to have. What happens? Attitude. Now, A, adversity. Adversity comes. That's what they experience. And T, troubles. Troubles everywhere. And then the trends of things going on. Uh, that's attitude. And then inconveniences. This is not convenient. This is not compatible with the opportunity of making progress. And then threats. They were being threatened uh, by foreign powers and by foreign uh, enemies. Then you is unchangeables. They are unchangeables in life. Son, I cannot change that. That's unchangeable. And then when it's raining, I cannot change that. That's an unchangeable. Then the condition of uh, you know what is happening around, I cannot change that. That's unchangeable. And because of those unchangeables, People don't know what attitude to have. D, discouragement. Many things come. And they come and serve as discouraging elements. And E, expectations. What they expected did not come through. And because of the failure of expectations coming through, then that kinds of models them up. And they cannot live. They do not have a bright face, a bright faith, a bright future. They say, look, my expectations are not fulfilled now. What's the right attitude when you have all those things? Number one, adversity. A, accept. It has happened, it has happened. Accept. Last year did not bring what I thought it would bring. Accept. Adversities within, adversities without. Don't complain. Accept. That's the very first thing. Here is where I am. Here is where I was born. I was born in this country. I don't have anything to do with that. God gave me that father. God gave me that mother. Maybe if I had my choice, I will choose another father. I will choose another mother. Here I am. I was born in that village. I was born in that town. Maybe because of that, there's adversity. Accept. Accept. That's the very first thing you have to do if you're always fighting it, always kicking it, always screaming, always crying. You're not going to have the right attitude. And then when there are troubles, that's the T of uh, attitude. Then what's going to be my attitude to troubles? Think through. Think through. This is trouble. What can I do? How can I change? How can I wage through this? How can I penetrate this and still move over? You are going to think through. You know, it's like, uh, you know, a great man, scientist in the world. Here is a great big ocean dividing this continent from this continent. What can we do? Think through. That's how aeroplane came there is a great mountain between this place and that place and we have found it will be sheer uh, stupidity or impossibility to remove that mountain think through keep on thinking can we tunnel through that mountain think through 
Well, that's the problem aeroplane has solved. There are people that were thinking and thinking through, and now they can move from one place to the other and fly over the mountains. In your life, you'll find some things stand there like mountains. You cannot penetrate, you cannot tunnel through, and you cannot remove that mountain. Think, keep on thinking. You'll fly over in Jesus' name. And then trains. There's some trains that are happening. And the trains minimize this type of tribe. And the, the, uh, the trains they make the minority tribe or minority people or the pygmies or the short people or the women. And they, 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 they just clamp them. But that's the train. Now what are you going to do? Try on. Try on over that thing you know when you meditate and you say what can i do you're not giving up a accept t think through another t triumph and then there are inconveniences inconveniences what am i going to do now this is inconvenient what do i do ignore you can't change that ignore this one is inconvenient Ignore. That one is inconvenient. Ignore. I feel the pangs and the pain of that thing. Ignore. I feel that this thing wants to direct my attention, focus my attention on things that will not help me. Just ignore. You ignore the inconveniences and then you have threats. What do I do with my threats? They threaten me. They threaten me. You know what you have to do? Tame your tongue. Tame your tongue. Have you discovered anytime you talk about what you don't like, what you don't like will repeat itself. If you tame your tongue, people will not know what you like, what you don't like. You know, people with emotion, they put their fists together and they smash the table. I hate it. Now, when you do that, you know what will happen? That thing will multiply. And the pressure you feel about that thing will increase. All you do at such times, when there are threats, tame the tongue. Put on a smile. Fake it until you make it. That smile, that grin, may be artificial at the beginning and make it real laughter and widen your mouth and let the people see the 32 inside there. You become happy and then you forget all those things that threaten your life and now the unchangeables. What if there's something happening that I cannot change? Utilize it. What do you mean by that? The law of gravity, the force of gravity, throw it up, it will come down. It's unchangeable. Utilize it. Afternoon, and then there's the sun. What can I do? Utilize it. The rainy season, I cannot change that. And the rain is pouring down. Farmers utilize that. Utilize it. Anything that appears unchangeable in life, Anything that appears, I can't alter that. I can't embellish that. I can't improve on that. It appears it's been there before I was born. It's there now in my life. It's there. It will be there after I'm gone. Unchangeable. You tell I see. Then uh, discouragement. What do I do? Disregard it. That thing that brings discouragement, just disregard it and say, there or not there, I am moving on. Somebody there, I am moving on. I am moving on. I, this January, I, all this year, I. And then everything that had been there before, I will turn, I will tunnel through, I. I'm moving on. Have you seen that sentence? That word moving is in the present continuous tense. Not, not just that in the past I moved, in the future I will move every day and every moment. And whenever all things come that discourage, 
I will not be discouraged. I disregard everything. I am moving on. Expectations, expectations. That's what I expect. This new year will be great for me. This new year will be kind of marvelous for me. That amen is for me. How about yourself? I said how about yourself? Your expectation will turn to realization. You know, you confront a, bro a brother, a sister, and uh, you said, uh, my brother, what's your expectation this year? And uh, you know, he said, I've, I've stopped uh, talking about expectation because last year, Two years ago, three years ago, I talked about expectation and see where I am now. But you know, express it, express it. Abraham, what's your expectation? I'm expecting Isaac. Five years after, Abraham, what's your expectation? I'm expecting Isaac. I'm 15 years after, what's your expectation? I'm expecting Isaac. 24 years after, what's your expectation? I'm expecting Isaac. On the 25th year, he came. Your own will not be that long. Yeah. Keep on, keep on, keep on. Express it. We're looking at Romans chapter 4, and I'm reading from verse 18. Romans chapter 4, verse 18. Who? Against hope, believe in hope. That's a good attitude. Who against hope, believe in hope that he might become, might become, it's not what you are now, might become, it's not where you are now, might become, it's your cup, whether it is at the bottom, or at the middle, or it's at the brim, or it's running over, will become, you'll become, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, and be not weak in faith. Be not weak in faith. Have you ever thought about that? Your legs are weak. If your faith is not weak, that strong faith will affect the feet that, is, that are weak. Your hands are weak. You cannot hold anything. It will be paining you if your hand is weak, but your faith is strong. That strong faith will affect your hand. It will become strong. My lungs are weak. And they tell me this and that. Well, if your faith is not weak, my kidneys are weak. If your faith is not weak, my brain is weak. If your, bra if your faith is not weak, my retentive memory is weak. My strength, my spine is weak. If your faith is not weak, it will change everything around. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. He considered not. What's the problem? We consider the things that are negative. That's the wrong attitude. What's our predicament? We consider the things we don't like. And we consider the things that are not working, working well for us. We consider the place of work that appears. Am I ever going to have progress here? But we're told this is the attitude. The attitude that wins. And the attitude that conquers. He considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old. What? Can anybody make anything good at a hundred years when he had not made it at 40 years? Didn't they say he fell at 40? Tell me. Now, that's not true. A fool at 40 is a fool forever. I find, I read recently about a 63-year-old woman, I think, that went back to university. He didn't have, the, she didn't have the chance in her younger years. And at 63, went back to college and got a degree, I think, at 67 
never too late. I read about a man that crossed 70, and he was uh, weak in his body. And he decided he will go to the gym and went there and exercised and became a weight lifter. And eventually, he even became a champion at that and developed all the biceps and developed all the muscles. I read of an athlete that had not been running before, but all of a sudden just decided, this is what I want to be. And was about 60 already, and he made it. The age is no barrier. He was at 100 years of age, and what he had been expecting to, for 25 years came. Whatever your age, let's start again. What we are waiting for, the time has now come. Yeah. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Some people say, you know, if I were alone by myself, I will climb every mountain. I will jump every hurdle. I will make all the progress I desire, I determine to make. But you know, I'm unlucky. That's what they say. I'm hooked up with somebody else. I have a problem. She has a problem and a greater problem. And problem times problem comes to problem squared. And because of that, what can I do now? Abraham said, Sarah's deadness in the womb will not hinder my miracle. Whatever happens to others, whatever does not happen to others, you're unstoppable. Yeah. You're unbeatable. Yeah. You're unconquerable. That thing you have prayed for, I have prayed for you. We have joined our faith together and we have said you are coming to the top. No other consideration. That's enough. If you and I, if two of us shall agree as touching anything, anything, anything on earth, it shall be done by a Father who is in heaven. I see you lifted up. I see you climbing. I see you progressing. Amen. You have the right attitude. Maintain that right attitude. Look at verse 20. In verse 20 it says, And he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. But he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Verse 21 and being fully persuaded. Are you persuaded that your life already has changed? I said, are you persuaded that all the failures of the past erased? Are you persuaded all the setbacks of the past that they are gone? Are you persuaded you are coming to a new life, a new level? Are you coming to a new height in Jesus' name? And be fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. What God has promised in your life is able. Able to perform. It will happen. Look at number two now. Number two, actions that break or broaden achievements brothers and sisters sons and daughters friends everyone here everyone over there action is very important somebody says i love everybody around me love without action we cannot see it does not make any meaning it's just talk of the mouth I have a great brain, well, good brain, great brain. Without action, what can that brain do? I have strength and skill. Without action, what will that skill or strength create in your life? I have great possibilities. My parents are rich. 
and my college is number one in the nation and my lecturers they are the very cream of lecturers in our land without your action what will all those things do? Action is very important. And your action may break you, or your action may broaden your rising and broaden your achievements. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 3 there. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse, uh, uh, verse 3. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. I can. I can do that. I'm better than that person. I'm higher than that person. When I decide to run, I can run faster than that person. I can get all the things I want to get in life. I can knock at every door. I can ask for any favor. I can make it in life. Stop talking so proudly. Let not arrogance come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are made. By him actions are made. The secret of progress and the secret of success is action. Action. Now, when we talk about action, what does that mean? Action for breakthrough. A, an image, don't annul. An image, become energized. Elevate yourself. Remind yourself of the promises. Remind yourself of those things you are reaching down and become animated and become alive that you have a purpose, a plan to live, bring joy to that, bring excitement to that, rise up, animate, don't annul. Don't allow your language, your utterance to cancel, annul all those good intentions. Now, in action, we have C. C, cultivate. Don't complain. Cultivate, you know, any good action we're going to have, any good habit we're going to have, we have to cultivate. Like the farmer takes the seed to the soil and digs and put the seed inside and covers it up and he waters it, he watches over it and fences around it to cultivate the crop. In your life, find the seed of greatness and the siege of progress, and the siege of power. Cultivate it, nurture it, attend to it, improve on it, cultivate, don't complain. T, in that word action, is try, try, try. There is uh, a fable, one will say a fable, it's uh, just a story. When you read a story that an animal spoke to that other one, that one does a fable. But sometimes we can use some of those fables. That's a little kite. And this kite saw a big kite flying in the, in the sky. And the kite said, I'd like to fly like that. And then uh, the big kite said, try. He said, no, I don't think I can. And then, but he kept on wishing he could. He kept on dreaming he could. And I said, I want to fly to the top like that. The big kite said, try. And then eventually, he allowed the string to be pulled. And then he came up. Looks like I'm doing it. Try. And then up and up again, up and up again, by trying and trying and trying. Try, don't tremble don't tremble at the challenge before you don't tremble at the task before you don't tremble at the calling before you don't tremble at the project before you try try and try again without try there's no action if you try to spell that word action and you remove the t 
Then you don't have action. I intensify. I've tried intensify. I started intensify. I began intensify. When you intensify your effort, when you increase your effort, when you go at it again, when you plunge yourself into it again, when you wake up your brain and you say, any other route, any other way, how can we do it better? And you intensify and you are not interfering. Intensify, don't interfere you know somebody wants to lift a big load and then he saw uh, you know two young people again he leaves that uh, load he goes to interfere you're in a class and you're in the library and you're reading uh, and you want to intensify so that you can make a higher grade this time and then you see other people outside outside the window of that library they're doing something then you leave your reading and you go to interfere and uh, people who are going to make it in life don't do that we intensify we do not interfere oh occupy don't oscillate occupy don't oscillate i'm sure you've seen that pendulum here and there not staying in one place you cannot locate it where are you pendulum here and there here and there, here and there, oscillating, occupy. Say, this is my calling, and this is what I'm here to do, and here is my mission. Occupy and don't oscillate. Navigate, navigate. You see, Columbus discovered a new world because of navigation. Come out of that room get into that boat navigate have your compass and your compass will tell you if you're looking for this this is the way to navigate navigate don't negate you know in the just just a few years ago centuries ago the people of the world believed that the earth was flat not round and then somebody began to think about it and he thought about different different things and he began to navigate and it's because of that he discovered the world the earth the globe is round and people who are not navigating they were negating that no it cannot be if the world is round i can't we stay like this table if the world is round, how can we sit down? Then when the world turns the other way, our heads will be down, and then we'll drop off the chair. But he maintained, I'm navigating here. I will not negate. Navigate in your life. Look at the ocean, and look at the extent, and look at the place you will get to, and don't negate. S, sit up. Stand out don't sulk you know there are people they sulk they complain they are moody they throw tantrums and you know they are stalking you won't progress like that it is when you sit up and you stand out and you say i will make it it is that kind of action animated cultivating trying, intensifying, occupying, navigating, sitting up, standing out, that will take you from where you are to where you ought to be. I see us making progress together. I said I see us making progress together. From years, I told young people like you, and I said they'll catch up with me. They said amen, say amen for them. I said some of you will catch up with me and go beyond me. You know, some of them in their heart, they thought that's impossible because of where you have been. How can we catch up with you and then even go beyond you? But I told them to say amen anyway. And they said amen anyway. 
I could stand here and begin to talk to you about one, two, three, four, five more that have caught up with me and they have gone beyond me. And now what I told them, I come to tell you. You will catch up with me. What are you? You will catch up with me. Praise the Lord. And then you will go beyond me in Jesus' name. Now, let's come to number three. Number three now, we're having number three. Number three, we're looking at associates that bury or birth accomplishments. Associates. Associates. You know, associates are companions. Associates are people. They come by our side to associate with us. But then, some associates actually come to decrease us. Some associates come to block our vision. Some associates come to bury our achievement. Some associates come to destroy, to disannul. Some associates come, it's running fast, too fast, rather, rather too fast, and they come to slow us down. And then uh, those of us who are fortunate in life, we have associates that come uh, beside us, and even though we thought we had done the very best, they say we can do more. We can go faster. We can climb higher. We can achieve more. That's the kind of associate that will burst new accomplishment in your life in Jesus' name. Let's look at Psalm 119, verse 63. Psalm 119. We're looking at verse 63. I am a companion of all them that fear thee, and of them that keep thy precepts. He said, my associates are the people that love the Lord, reverence the Lord, fear the Lord, believe in the Lord, they trust in the Lord, those are my associates. That the people that will encourage my faith, encourage my confidence, encourage me to possess all the promises and all the prophecies the Lord had given me. I am a companion of all them that fear thee and of them that keep thy precepts and then in verse 64 it tells us there the earth O Lord is full of thy mercy teach me thy statute 65 in 65 thou hast dealt well with thy servant O Lord according unto thy word you've dealt well with me the Lord will deal well with you Verse 66, it says, Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have believed thy commandments. 67 tells us, Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now have I kept thy word. Verse 68 tells us, Thou art good and doest good. Thou art good and doest good. He did good in the past. He's doing good today. He will do good in the future. He'll keep on doing good in your life in Jesus' name. Thou art good and doest good. Teach me thy statutes. And the Lord himself will do that in Jesus' name. He'll bring good associates, great associates, progressive associates, it's your life in Jesus' name. He'll bring the people that will help you. The people that will lift you up. The people that will make you look higher than you have ever looked in Jesus' name. Now, of all associates, 
Here is the one that is the greatest of all associates, is the most glorious of all associates, and the most gracious of all associates. In fact, he is the associate. The associate is so separate, is so higher than any other associate, and he wants to associate with you, or you to associate with him, then he will hold your hand and take you high, high, high in Jesus' name. Look up, not here, look up, the sky is your limit. Because there's an associate that knows the path to the top, the path to the skies, and he wants to lead you there. Associate, associate. Spell that associate on paper. A is the advocate. He is the advocate. He's the one that goes before you and goes to the heavenly father and he says, he's my friend. I died for him to forgive him. And he is the advocate, the heavenly lawyer that argues your case before the Lord. And then you become justified. You become acquitted. And all the counts of heaven against you, everything is erased. Associate the great, gracious, glorious associate, advocate. S is Savior. He saves you. He saves from sin. He saves from self. He saves from Satan. He saves from suffering. He saves from everything that will put you down and drag you down. This associate, there's nobody like him. There's no other name given among men whereby you can be saved. It is only this associate. The Savior, it will save you. Advocate, Savior, Shepherd. I am the Good Shepherd, and I gave my life for the sheep. Nobody took it from him, but he voluntarily, because of the love he has for you. He is your Shepherd. The Lord is my Shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is your Shepherd. You're not lag. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me in the way of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear any evil. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Ye. He sets a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He anoints my head. My cup runs over. And now surely, somebody help me shout surely. 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 Shout it for yourself. Surely. Goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of your life and you will live forever with him in Jesus name he is our shepherd oh of that associate is the omnipotent one is the omnipresent one is the omniscient one he knows all about you and he can do everything there is to be done in your life and if you are heavy and there's a load pulling you down is the omnipotent one he'll cut off all the loads that drag you down in jesus name and your life will fly your destiny will fly. You will look up they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And it says they'll mount up with wings as eagles. You will walk, you will not faint. You will run, you will not be weary. And the things that used to make you tired easily before, all that tiredness is gone. I see you with new strength and new power and new vigor and new possibility. And you're running, you'll not be tired in Jesus name is a your advocate is as your savior is as your shepherd is all the omnipotent one is see the counselor 
the counselor. He knows every turn of the way, every bench of the way. He knows all the challenges that are there and he will see you through because his counselor and I is intercessor, intercessor, intercessor. Moses prayed uh, for Israel, intercessor. Abraham prayed for Sodom and Gomorrah, intercessor. Joshua prayed for Israel, intercessor. And Paul prayed for Israel, intercessor. The greatest intercessor that ever lived is Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. And the Bible says he is higher than the heavens and he makes intercession for you. For me. For me. For me. Somebody said, are you praying for me? And that person replied, I even forgot. I had so much problems by myself. I didn't remember you. And then you get discouraged. But Christ, on the right hand side of the Father, he has no problem. You are the only one he's thinking about. And he is praying for you. Yeah. And then he is the Alpha and the Omega. The Alpha and the and the Omega, the Alpha and the Omega. Nothing before him, nothing after him is the beginning and the end. And everything in between, he will take care of. T is the truth. He is the truth. I am the way, I am the life, I am the truth. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And then he said, he shall know me the truth and me the truth will set you free. And if the Son shall set you free, you are free indeed. I am free indeed. I am free indeed. Associate, advocate, savior, shepherd, omnipresent, counselor, intercessor, alpha and omega, the truth, E. Emmanuel. Emmanuel, God with us. Emmanuel, when you are sick, it's Emmanuel, the healer will be with you. When you are crying, the comforter, Emmanuel, he'll be with you. When there are no resources and no provision, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Emmanuel, God with us, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Anywhere you are, anywhere you go, this associate will be with you and then he'll pull you to the top and the next time I see you, after tomorrow, after this program, the next time I see you, while well, you're coming and then I'm coming, I see you smiling. I said, who is this person? Such bright, white, uh, smile and then I said maybe he has something to say and then I said good morning and then you say good morning and then your good morning is like I've never heard a good morning like this before I said wow who are you you said I am the man I am the woman I'm the boy I'm the girl you spoke about and I say, where were you before that time? You said I was at the last rung of the ladder. And I say, where are you now? You said, the associate came to my life. He lifted me up. And then you begin to tell me stories. I said, we need to write your autobiography. We need to write something about this. What is the person I'm talking about there? Why don't you rise up? Why don't you rise up and say, yes, I am here. I am the person. Give yourself to the Lord. If you have not been with the Lord, if he has not been your advocate, your savior, your shepherd, the omnipotent one in your life, if he has not been your counselor, intercessor, Alpha and Omega, and the truth and Emmanuel in your life, say, Lord, now I belong to you totally, completely, without reservation. Receive me, Lord, and the Lord will receive you. And then something great, something glorious, something good will begin to happen in your life, even from this very moment in Jesus' name. Say an amen for yourself. Amen that reaches the ears of God in heaven. 
Amen. That brings the blessing down upon your life. It has happened. Raise up your hand there. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for everyone here today. And I pray, Lord, you turn every life around. You change every heart right now. And I pray, Lord, everyone will now move up in the right direction, up higher, greater, more glorious. In Jesus' name. I pray that all the things, all the habits, and all the actions that dragged them down before, Lord, I pray all those actions that drag people down, cancel in their lives in Jesus' name. According to your promise, let there be a performance. Forgive their sin. Set them free. Lift them up. Transform their lives. Grant them the faith to know that everything they have had today is for them one by one without exception in Jesus' name. Lift up everyone and let everyone come to a higher level than they had ever been. And Lord, the prophecy upon each life that when we meet in the future, I'll see that smile of the achiever, the smile of the conqueror, the smile of the unconquerable, the smile of the unstoppable, and the smile of somebody who has been lifted up. Let that prophecy be fulfilled in every life. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray.